I'm Steve Bowers. And Cassandra Fuller. And we welcome you to Six in the City. That's right. We were going to color coordinate today, Breast we Cancer were. Awareness Month, wear pink, pink and... Pink. Somehow it's... You're just a mild pink and I'm hot pink. <laughs> oh, you're all hot. So you're the hot pink. Yes, And it's I'm the hot mild pink. pink. You're mild pink. I don't yeah. know how that got worked out. Is your shirt pink or is it white? It's a pink shirt as uh -huh. well. Okay. Kind of yeah, faded. Fine. It's been mm -hmm. washed a few times. <laughs> Um, anyway, so well, much for the color coordination, but you know our attempt. heart's in the right place. That's right? exactly right. We have a lot of people to whom we're going to speak today. Amanda Newell is with us, and Sandra White, we're going to find out about the St. John's Community Services and an event they've got coming up. And then Keith Miller is the beast. That's right. And Lily Richardson's the bell. It's and always going to be a bell. Yeah, we're getting ready for, for Beauty and the Beast, and we'll get details of that. Plus, Jackie Utley is here along with Marty Clements because it is time again for the Veterans, Veterans Day, Day program and parade that's coming up in November. And then we have Bev Voss and Cheryl Emerson with the Child Evangelism Fellowship because they've got an event coming up. All right, so we're going to find out about that. The okay. Women of Hope are with us. They will be performing they today. Will. We always look forward to having them And then having we'll get to us. talk to Marcy yeah, Hendricks and to, of the Women of Hope. And Christy Butler will be with That's us right, as well, right? And then Trish Jared is with us. There's a special women's program at Aswell Recovery Center, and we're going to get details of that, moms and babies, and we've got details of that coming up. Plus all the folks from the Women of Hope. That's right. So we got a full show. We, got we a do full have a studio. full show, full studio, and overflow. We nearly filled the Civic Center today. <laughs> we did. Well, it's we full. Have. And uh, all these folks are coming up as we continue this six, six in, in the, the city. city. For the most reliable drinking water supply at the highest quality, reach for the tap. Our tap water is safe and continues to exceed all government requirements. For more information about our drinking water, visit www.jacksenergy.com slash J-E-A-C-C-R. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? The JEA app. With it, you may view the electric outage map, report electric outages, receive electric outage alerts, view your current account information in real time. You can even make a payment with one click. Name, account number, you're in. Convenient access with the free JEA app, keeping you connected with JEA today. Experience something new with View It Video On Demand. Now you can preview and rent movies with your remote. Press the TiVo button to go to the home screen. Select View It On Demand to get started. Browse new movie releases and events. Select what you want to watch, then rent. There's even free stuff. You'll find karaoke songs, fun screensaver for your TV, videos for the kids, and more. Experience more with TiVo and View It Video On Demand. The St. John's Community Services. We don't know what that is. That's right, we're about, but we're to, about find to find out because out. Amanda Newell is with us and Sandra White. They've got an event coming up in Memphis next Tuesday. We'll find out about that in a moment. But Amanda's going to talk to us. She's a program director about what exactly St. John's Community Services is. What is this? Well, thank you for having us. Um, yeah. St. John's Community Services. We are a nonprofit organization based out of Washington, D.C. This is our 151st year in operation, right. and we provide services to people with all abilities. Um, here in Jackson and several other locations in West Tennessee, we provide services to adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities. Okay. Um, we provide residential services, employment services, day services. And then also earlier this year, we acquired a retirement home in um, Trenton. So now we do senior services. Okay. And in Tennessee, this is our 20th year in operation. Year in Tennessee. We started in 1999. How did it start then 151 years ago? Um, we started as a small hospital for children. Okay. and. Um, who were kind of living on the streets of Washington, D.C., kind of during the war era, and they okay. were orphaned. And we, um, some nurses of the St. John's Episcopal Church that's right across the street from the White House, they brought these children in that were orphaned and um, just kind so of started, started caring for them. Started, started We've started. been an orphanage over the years. We've been a, um, a hospital over the years, a, a day program, a center. Yes. And um, yeah. so today we, we provide services to... Um, to folks in their residential, in their homes. You okay. said you've been in Tennessee for 20 years. How long have you been in Jackson? Um, since around 1999. Mm -hmm. It started in okay. Memphis first, and then we came to Jackson okay. shortly after that. Okay, where mm -hmm. are you located? We are in Bartlett, Jackson, Martin, Paris, and Trenton. Oh, okay. And then well, earlier this well, year, okay. we started senior services. What's the best way to find home? out about the services that you provide then? 
Um, our website, uh, www.sjcs.org. S-J- S-J-C-S. S-J-C-S.org. S-J-C-S. Right. Now, we got an event coming up in Memphis. It's going to be next Tuesday, right? So what is this event? And tell us about it. Okay, that is the opportunity to commemorate the 20 years of service here in Tennessee. And that event will be held at the Hilton Memphis at 939 Ridge Lake Boulevard in Memphis, Tennessee. We will have art, food, music. Uh, we will have silent auction items from Uh, the Tennessee Titans, Philadelphia Eagles, and the Hilton Hotel itself, and some uh, other NFL players. Uh, It will be an opportunity for uh, people in in the community to come out and see uh, how we celebrate our champions, the people that we support uh, every day, 24-7, sometimes a day. And we also are an organization that does enabling technology, uh, incorporating that. But we would love for the uh, community to come out and participate. And if they couldn't attend, they can always donate towards our mission, as you've heard earlier, uh, to the www.sjcs.org forward slash donate. Okay. Yes. How are you funded? Then? Is it a combination of sources to, to fund? It is. A combination. It is. We, um, there's a Medicaid waiver program as well as different NCOs. Okay. And it kind of, excuse me, it kind of varies by state by state, um, depending on their um, state entity and, and their funding sources. And coming into an area, how do you assess what you're going to do or the services? The needs, or, the need for services. Like if you came to Jackson for the first time, you came here first to do residential and, services. And, right, we started as residential services yes. in Jackson. Okay. We, um, it, it kind of started back when Arlington was starting to close okay. um, and okay. the developmental centers started right. to close right. down kind of in the in the and 80s. We've we closed them all in Tennessee, right? They have, they have been lawsuit. closed, yes. And so they moved people out of those developmental centers into smaller homes of their own. And so they're called supported living homes, and that's what we do. We yes. provide the caregivers and the oversight, the financial assistance, the medical assistance, um, to support those those people in their homes, so they can okay. they can have residential homes of their own instead of living in developmental centers, which is a thing of the past. So then to move into something such as a senior care center, like in Trenton, okay, um, is that just kind of an assessment of the market, or. Well, we don't typically do centers anymore. Um, however, the Harlan Morris Retirement Home in Trenton, we recently acquired that. That is a retirement facility. Okay. It's considered a residential home for the aged. It's kind of like an assisted living, um, but it's kind of a retirement home. But we have 24-hour staff and that sort of thing for seniors. So yeah, we, right, have, okay. we have um, dove headfirst this year into yes. senior care. Okay. <laughs> so. yes. So, Something new in this area. Well, it right. is. This is all part of St. John's Community <laughs> Services. And, and once again, Sandra, that website is? www.sjcs.org. SJCS.org. SJCS.org. Come to the event. The event's free, by the, the way, right? The event is free. <laughs> Definitely free okay. food, free music, entertainment, and just come out and have a great time with the people that we support. And we can find out more about St. John's Community yes. Services. Next Tuesday at the Hilton in Memphis. Next Tuesday, November 5th at the Hilton, Memphis at 939 Ridge Lake. It starts at what time? It is from 5 to 8 p.m. 5 to 8 p.m. Well, it's All good right. to see you both. It is good to have appreciate, you. Thank appreciate you. the opportunity to find out more about this. That's and, right. and just want to wear the, to know uh, the about organization. St. John's. St. John's Community Services. We're going to find out about the Beauty and the Beast. Uh-oh. Coming up next on this Six in the City. With E Plus Broadband, you can work, play, chat, explore, at the speed of light. Fiber technology delivers massive data to your home through strands of glass. HD video streams with no buffering. Websites load instantly and games never lag. No matter how many devices are connected, experience gigabit internet for less than $57 per month when you bundle TV and phone. Call or click eplusbroadband.com today. Are you ready for all the football all the time in a season that never ends? Well, these six planes are ready. This grandpa's ready. The fans are ready. The teams are ready. Are you ready? talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job.
Welcome back to Six in the City. We'll be hearing from the women of hope. That's right. Got a stage Barry full. Gala's coming up the 12th. we got that coming up. But right now, we're going to find out about Beauty and the Beast. And we have them both here. Keaton Miller is the Beast and Lily Richardson is the Belle. I don't guess I had to explain that. I could have just said we had Keaton well, and Lily in there. Yeah, that's, we'll figure that's out who, true. Who was that's what? <laughs> Part, pardon me, Lily. That was an unnecessary explanation. Here. <laughs> All right, so this is coming up this weekend. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so let's go through the times and dates and all that. All right, so the show date is this Saturday at 7 o'clock. That'll be November Which is November 2nd. Yes, November 2nd, November 3rd, okay. this Sunday at 2, two. and November 4th, Monday. Oh, Monday. Oh, Monday. Yes. So we're yes. doing a Monday. And yes. Monday's at 7 o'clock, right? Yes, ma'am. So okay. 7 on Saturday and Monday, 2 mm -hmm. o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Yes, sir. Right. And this is at USJ's Blankenship Theater. Yes, sir. So we're ready to go. All right, so tell us about this. You guys are pros at this stuff. You've been doing it all your life, right. apparently. Not your first rodeo. Right. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. So this is, uh, this is costume heavy and all that other stuff, right? Oh my gosh, it's it's everything heavy. Um, this is actually one of the most technical advanced shows we've done. Um, we have over, I think, 11 different technical aspects. We have fog machines, confetti, sparklers, all these different types of things. Um, it's USJ's largest, most complex set. Oh okay. wow. We've built a 40 foot massive castle that extends 16 feet tall and slightly like it. it's 40 feet wide and about 11 feet deep, and it's yeah. complete with stairs and bookshelves and stained glass windows. You just basically windows. built the house. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of proof you had to have to build on That's this? That's right. Is, is it done by the fine, art, fine arts department, too? It is actually done by me and my dad. Is that <laughs> yeah. right? And Miss Erica oh, yeah. Davidson. And we have a few other students help, but those are the say, main son, three. have you ever thought about a different line of work? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to say, stop volunteering me for all exactly. this stuff. Exactly. Well, if I bought you a costume or two, that'd be it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what about these roles? All right, Lily, let's, let's jump into this. You, did you read for this specifically? or I did read for this. Okay. All right, so you went after this one. Yes, sir. All right. So what, what, what appeals to you about this role? Uh, I really like Belle. She's a book nerd, which I get because I'm kind of like that as well. She's very independent. She wants to find herself. She seeks out adventure. So I think she's a very interesting character to play. Okay. She's very refreshing. Okay. What about the Beast? Uh, from, from the start of the show, I was very interested in playing the Beast. Um, and once cast, you know, I was really excited to kind of get to know the character. Um, I, I typically have played princely type roles and stuff, and so getting to play a character that is as tortured as the Beast, um, it's been really interesting, especially finding like my body, how I move as the Beast versus how I move as the Prince towards the end, and okay. how I have to move my head and my arms in different positions, especially with so, the massive costume. I was say, you're, and your costume is probably yes. huge. Yes. Yes. How, have y'all been working in costume now? You're going into this, right? When did you start? We just got costumes last night. Oh, so. oh wow. So. so how does that change things? Then? It, it, I think, I mean, I'm sure you would agree, mm -hmm. it makes things easier as an actor. Um, so it helps, because it helps you get yeah, into character it, 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 it more. it immerses you more so in the scene. You, you almost feel more natural in the mm -hmm. role right. um, versus a shorts and t-shirts or a hard, uniform. Exactly. You know, I'm doing the bees, walking around now, in shorts and t-shirts. the other characters that are in this play, then, that will include... Well, because I've seen all I've seen is oh, the movie. Right? You've got Lumiere, Cogsworth okay. is the clock. You have Mrs. Potts. Mrs. Yeah, Potts, that's right. Um, that's right. So this is all costume heavy. Oh, it is massive, massive. So where do you guys costume. get the costumes? Do you rent those? Yes, or those? we do. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. we rented our costumes from Nor Costco. Okay. Um, they're a I didn't know if company. you were you were making costumes. A you few know. of them, a few of them we actually have made. <laughs> Mrs. Um, Potts. Yeah. <laughs> Lumiere is made. <laughs> so we have a cast of about 101 students. Wow. It is Ooh, massive. Yeah. It's Does it cross the board between mm -hmm. upper school, upper lower school, school, lower school, middle school? We have them all. Wow. Um, and our lower school students are playing forks and knives and spoons. They're so cute. They're precious. And so we've it. actually made their costumes. They oh, have okay. giant spoons with glitter <laughs> all over them. Well, this is oh, going to be quite glitter. a production. <laughs> I All right, know. it's coming up this Friday, no, this Saturday, this Saturday. and Monday. Yes, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday, and Monday. Fourth at 7, and then Sunday, Sunday at 2. Yes, so get tickets. We obviously need to sell tickets. Yes. Yes. Can we get tickets yes. at the door at the yes. theater? Yes, yeah. tickets okay. at the door. And they're how much? Uh, tickets are $8 for students and seniors and $12 for adults. adults okay. okay. And you can get tickets at the door or on usjbruins.org. Okay. Or usjbruins.org. Ms. Davidson wants to sell tickets. That's right. The yes, budget has do. been stretched. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Herstein wants to sell tickets. <laughs> so, somebody out there saying, what? A hundred actors? Okay. Is this well, the biggest production? Congratulations on this. Yeah. It's good to see Probably, yeah. right, Probably one of the biggest one by of the far. Biggest. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, we're delighted to have these folks with us. They, they visit with us each year now. These are the Women of Hope.
Bring your tired to bring your shame. Bring your guilt to bring your pain. Don't you know it's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I rest with a voice that keeps telling me. Hey there, e Broadband customer. Want fast internet and Wi-Fi to power all those streaming devices everywhere in your home? You got it. TV that fits your family? You got it. Reliable home phone with the security of 911 emergency location? You got it. That's right. With internet, TV, and phone from e Broadband, you've got it all from one local company that cares. Call today for gig internet for less than $57 per month when you bundle TV and phone. The process is called lining. Instead of replacing sewer pipe, you line it. The lining seals the pipe, covering any leakage points. This recent lining of the 54-inch river interceptor line cost over $900,000, but that's much less expensive than replacement, and it extended the life of the key line that transfers sewage from several lines to the wastewater treatment plant on Miller Drive. Protecting community health and doing it efficiently is all a part of JEA Today. I'm Mark Taylor. I'm the owner of Renew Medical Services based out of here in Jackson, Tennessee. We're a provider of uh, 
Biomedical Services for Medical Professionals. At Renew Biomedical, our use of telecom is of utmost importance. We have to reach our customers in a timely fashion so we can diagnose and service their equipment needs. So e Broadband allows Renew Biomedical to connect effectively with our customers in whichever way they choose, via email, phone, Skype, teleconferencing, in any way you can imagine. We will hear more from the Women of Hope coming up in this segment. Before we get there, we're going to talk about Veterans Day, That's or at right. least as we observe it here, because we had a Veterans Day program coming up Friday, November the 8th, and then the Veterans Day parade is going to be downtown Jackson. Ryan Martin is going to be downtown this year. It's going to be downtown that's, Jackson. That's coming, that's coming up the night, Saturday the night. So Jackie Utley is with us and, and Marty Clements, and Jackie Utley, of course, is with DAR. So let's talk about the Veterans Program first. Okay. That's Friday night. Friday night, November the 8th. It'll be at Englewood Baptist Church okay. in the Sanctuary. Uh, the program will begin at 6.30, but the doors will be open about 5.30, and we'll have exhibitors there, the VFW, the American Legion, the Red Cross, DAR, okay. various groups that support veterans, okay. and that will be passing out information and, and goodies, okay. to goodies to the veterans, yes. All right, so is there a speaker this year? Or? The speaker will be Diane Height. She is the CEO and founder of Forever Young Senior Veterans, and she's the one that took a large group from Memphis in the Mid-South to the Normandy uh, commemoration okay. back in oh, June. Yeah. Right, okay. uh, was featured on ABC News Nightly News. Okay. And I don't know if you remember the story about the veteran who was reunited with his French girlfriend okay. oh. after mm, okay. they're, they're both in their 90s wow. diane facilitated that diane okay. Hyde, and so she's going to be talking about that and about the trip taking the veterans back to the to normandy okay. where they had stormed the beach 75 years does ago. she wow. do these kind of trips uh, she does these trips that's okay. that's, course, that's that's what they one, do special that was a special one uh, she takes veterans either to washington or she goes to italy or to france or she's Planning one to Belgium for the Battle of the Bulge commemoration. Okay, wow. So okay. that's that's her. That's the whole fo focus of this group. Okay. Oh wow. And well, there's going to be program, music. Yeah. There will be music. Okay. Our very own Larissa Lanier will Fantastic. be singing the national okay. anthem. Okay. We will have innovation from Jackson State yeah. Community College. Yeah. We'll be okay. singing the the uh, service hymns, and we'll have uh, a sing along with God Bless America. Uh -huh. The JROTC groups from the three major high schools, Northside, Southside, and Liberty will be doing uh, presentations and have an honor guard. Okay. And this so event is free and open to free, the public? It is free. It is open. We encourage oh, all Lord. veterans. It's, it's a recognition Recon for and veterans. A celebration okay. of our veterans. Celebration yep. of our veterans. Okay. And we would, you know, it's free and open, and we would love to have as many veterans there as we can. All right. So spread the word among the veterans community. That is Friday at Inglewood Baptist Church, Friday, yes. November the 8th. Inglewood yes. Baptist Church starting at 6, but then the exhibit is there at 5. And the veterans officers are there. <laughs> Right to provide yes, information yes. as oh, well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yes. so all, all that will be good. It's a special, special night. Going to turn yeah. around Saturday, Saturday the night then and come downtown for the parade. So, Marty, we're going to line up and do what? And can I still get in? <laughs> well, you got Beauty and the Beast round two a little bit older. You, know, and you don't have to say we don't have to identify that. We <laughs> One thing we don't have to identify here. That's there right. You go. All right. Yeah, we're going to start the parade downtown. We line up at the staging areas at Civ Civic Center. Okay. And uh, we're going to ring the bell at 11 o'clock. 11th okay. hour, the 11th, 11th day, day for the arms okay. and stuff. Yeah. And we start the parade then, going downtown. We're not on Highland, but we're going down into there. And we just encourage everybody to line up across there and cheer. It's a lot of the veterans are in the parade, and then there's mm -hmm. several more that just come and watch it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we need... we need. So uh, the best place to be downtown then to see the parade... Uh, <laughs> up there around the City around Hall. Square, and, and Court Court City Square. Hall, right, yeah. right Liberty, there. Okay. Liberty, okay. Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. Oh, Liberty yeah. Street okay. certainly would yeah. be appropriate. Yes. Like, so to come right up Liberty Street, aren't that that would that would make sense on on, on this day? Yeah. Can you still get in this parade? I know sometimes you have scout troops and others that want to be in this. We do. We encourage them to pre-register. It makes it a lot easier yeah, for us absolutely. because we do have uh, commentators up there telling right. about the parade right. and everything. So how 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 would you register? Who who, who do you contact? Uh, you can contact Jackie. I'll give you her cell <laughs> Here's her cell phone you. number and yeah. address. Yeah. Drop it by the house. Knock yeah. on her door anywhere between 4 and 5 in the morning. She's there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can call my office, 427-1271. Okay. Uh, we have an application that we can give, and it's on a website that we can do. So, yeah, we Are encourage people to do that. You're on Facebook, too? 
Yes, okay. All right. We'll look it up. Well, it's the Veterans Program. It is Friday night, November the 8th at Inglewood Baptist Church, starting at 6, and exhibits opening at 5.30, and the Veterans Day Parade launches at 11 o'clock on Saturday the 9th, downtown Jackson. Appreciate all the work. That's a Thank lot of work. Thank you guys for being We here. appreciate it. We appreciate the veterans. Right. Right. Yes, absolutely. Let's go back to the main stage once again. These are the Women of Hope. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quite. And I'll never get it right. But it turns out they're the ones you've been looking for all this time. Cause I'm just nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus i'm living for the world to see nobody but jesus most had stage fright and david brought a rock to a sword fight you picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and you changed the world the moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose so when i hear that devil start talking to me saying who do you think you are i'm just nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood-bought faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. Go down in history. As another blood of all faithful member of the family. So wanna be. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm just nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Throughout its history, Jackson, Tennessee has been a leader in manufacturing, education, transportation, utility service, and more. But the key to Jackson's future, full gig fiber to the home infrastructure, E plus broadband. Innovative applications, fastest connectivity, revolutionizing everything. JA's fiber network offers Jackson unlimited capacity for any future bandwidth demands. Connectivity, heavy internet usage, the best reliability. Jackson, Tennessee, not just a gig city, an innovation city. Stop and think about your health. Don't smoke. If you do, quit. Eat healthy. Make small changes in your diet that can impact your health. Be more active. Start in small ways and keep going. And know your numbers. Your blood pressure and your cholesterol are important to your health. Friends of Heart ask you be a friend of your own heart. Jackson's first private utility was the Citizens Gas Light Company. 
the company organized June 28, 1871 to bring street lights to Jackson. The system used coal or coke burned in ovens to generate gas distributed through wood pipes to street lights ignited by lamplighters at dusk. From there, the service expanded to home lighting. We didn't know it then, but we were on the way to JEA today. Bev Voss and Cheryl Emerson with us to talk about the Child Evangel Evangelism Fellowship. And uh, they've got a website. It is cefjacksontn.com. We'll find out more about that. They have a special event coming up, and that is going to be November the 9th. Which right? is Saturday. Uh, which is Saturday, November 9th. So let's talk about the event. I want to find out about the organization. So the event itself. The event is a night of thanksgiving. All right. It's a celebration for what's happened with CEF throughout the past year and then also to provide funds for our future. Okay. So that night uh, we're meeting at Fellowship Bible Church, which is over on Pleasant Plains, and they've been gracious enough to let us come in and use their beautiful facility. Okay. We have... Um, some delicious coffee coming from Green Frog All Coffee right. Company. Okay. And everything is complimentary. There's no fee to attend that night. Uh, we would just love for the community to come out. We have the uh, Renaissance Choir from Bethel, Bethel. Bethel. University. Okay. Yeah. And if you've not heard them, I would encourage They're you to come. To they are a treat to hear. They're very high energy, I mean, 75 high, uh, college students, okay. so you're going to have a lot of energy. That's right. And uh, they sing everything from gospel, uh, praise and worship to classical. So it's just a good mix of, of really good music. So. This will be Saturday, November 9th at Fellowship Bible. That will be at uh, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And no, no charge for this. Just no charge. And and doors open at 6.30? Doors see. open at 6.30. The uh, concert will start at 7. 7 o'clock. Okay. All right. So what is Child Evangelism Fellowship then? Glad you asked. Glad you asked. Child Evangelism Fellowship, CEF, establishes Good News Clubs, which okay. is basically like um, a, a Sunday school where you tell the story of Jesus to children. It's 82. What age, Beth? And this is... Um, preschool th um, through elementary, okay. and we are just recently, a week or two ago, established a class for teenagers. Okay. Okay. So that's a new new start. We're glad about that. We're excited about that. It's an international ministry. We're not only local, statewide, national, but we're around the world, and it's also um, 82 years old. So oh, it's wow. it's venerable. It's been around, and it's a it's a a real blessing to be a part of this organization. Right, so these clubs are organized through churches or schools or uh, independent organizations? How is it Well, done? they're organized through Child Evangelism Fellowship, through okay. through our ministry, through um, um, our um, director works. Randy Nicholas works really hard with the communities and the churches. He's visiting many churches. We, ha we are a partner with churches. We have, um, we train teachers. We have them trained to go in and do this. And so when there's good news, uh, good news clubs can be established in the school in an afternoon program, after school program. Okay. It can also be in boys and girls clubs. It can be um, places that um, parents have said, this is fine. We'd like to have our children participate. It's a safe place. It's a good place to um, just share the good news of Jesus Christ with young people. And they um, sing songs. Wonderful songs. We've just heard good songs. Sing songs, uh, Bible story, uh, Bible verses. Pardon me, Bible verses. They learn Bible verses. They they hear the gospel story, the stories of the Bible, and um, it's very engaging. Okay. Oh wow. They meet then weekly, or how's it done? Yes, okay. weekly. Mm -hmm. So weekly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a Cub Scout gathering or pack or something. You're there. right. Okay. That's a good way. Or den mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. So, so what started this organization all these years ago? Well, that's an interesting, it's a really interesting story. The founder himself um, asked his mother as a young boy about Jesus. And she said, you're too young. You don't understand this, these kinds of things yet. And kind of put him off. And it wasn't until he was in college that he learned about the story of salvation in the Bible and accepted Christ as his savior and realized Young children, children have an understanding and a comprehension of the Bible and the meaning of Jesus and um, him dying for our sins. And so he said, this is a great need, and he established Child Evangelism okay. Fellowship. Okay, and that's mm -hmm. been over 50 years ago. Over 80 years over ago. Over 80 years, years ago. ago, wow. Yes. Okay. It started where? 
The, it, well, it start. I don't know where it started. <laughs> in the United States, right, it started okay. in the United yeah, States, right. and I'll have to pardon. And so it's an international me. organization. How mm -hmm. long has it been in Jackson? About 20, 20 years. Oh 20 wow, years 20 Jackson. years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, we of course we have now children that have gone to this in Jackson that, who are adults in their adult life, and we'll okay. be hearing a testimony from one of them okay. at the event, event Saturday night. Oh wow. Once again, if you want to find out more, it's a Child <laughs> Evangelism <laughs> Fellowship. So it's cefjacksontn.com. Cef JacksonTN.com. And the event, the celebration will be on the 9th of November, that's Saturday. It'll be at Fellowship Bible Church and it will start at 7. So, right. All right. The doors open at 6.30 and you don't need tickets. It's good to see you both. It Appreciate is. This it's good to have you ladies much. here. It's good to find out about this. We're going to find out more about the Women of Hope Gala coming up. We'll talk to Marcy and to Christy coming up next on this Six in the City. Where is the American spirit? It's right here in the people of West Tennessee. Every day, people walk through these doors to selflessly help others, to give without expecting anything in return. So where is the American spirit? It's right here, in the people of Lifeline, our community's blood bank, where we all come together to help each other, and the American spirit thrives. Ask what you can do for your country. J.A.'s Customer Center on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive now has a drive through payment kiosk. No more getting out of the car, waiting in teller lines to pay your utility bill. The separate entrance allows for easy access, and the covered kiosk and step-by-step -step screen prompts guide you through the payment process. Cash, check, credit, or debit card. Credit to your account is immediate. A printed confirmation receipt is provided. Another step in service to customers, all a part of J.A. Today. Tune to the Travel Channel. Say it, watch it, it's that easy with the power of voice control. Set up one pass for the Warriors. Catch all the action with the power of voice control. Welcome back to Six in the City. We'll have more from the Women of Hope coming up in this segment. And speaking of Women of Hope, Marcy Hendricks, who started all this, and Christy Butler with us, the Women of Hope. Their gala is coming up November the 12th. We're going to find out about that. But they've also opened a cafe, and you serve lunch when? We, we're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 to 5, and we serve, like, barbecue, ribs, beef briskets, the best you ever... It's the best food in town. Best food in town. <laughs> yes. And they got those wonderful cakes and all that stuff. Yes, and Hope Cats. So, now, that is located... It's at 721 South Royal, right beside the bread store and bread across store. from the fire department. All right, so we know, we know no, we're exactly. on South Royal. So Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 until 5. Yes. All right, so don't... don't I went down there today. Was gonna, the parking lot was full. That's right. <laughs> it was full. I was ill about that, but you know. But you could have parked somewhere else and well, walked I, over I there and got you some exercise. Tried to squ squeeze in, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I could have walked. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Strange that idea never never <laughs> struck my mind. You know, funny. Anyway, huh. it's good to see you both. Good to have you good here. Let's yes. talk about the gala coming up the twelfth. It's the tenth annual. I can't yes, believe it's our tenth annual. I know. I can't believe that either. And I think we come here almost every year to talk so. about the gala. I think so we that's have. exciting. It's went from Youth Town Gym to now we're at Northside Methodist, uh, where so we're we in have Hope it. Hall. And Hope, Hope Hall. Hall. Yes. All right, so that's coming on. It'll start at six. So what's going to happen that evening? At, well, the doors open at, at five thirty, and we'll have okay. a silent auction. And I want Christy to tell one of the testimonies that's real exciting this year. It's already been filmed, you know, so okay. let her tell you. My daughter, she's 20 years old, and when she came into the, when I came into the center, she hated me. I mean, she was very upset with me. And so, yeah, she told me that she hated me, and she would never speak to me How old was she when you came into the center? How was she? How she old was, was she? She yeah. was 14. She was 14. When she came to, yeah, and now she's 20, so now she's given her testimony about how the families are addicted or how they are affected by that the addicted addiction. parents. And so she's now we are very close and probably closer than we have ever been. And she and helps She tells out. how the women of hope brought her and her mother back together and her brothers. So, so you say she hated you for what reason? Just because of the addiction or? Well, when I was in my addiction, 
I was never there for her. She okay. didn't have a mother like other children did in okay. school and doing things with them. I was always out drug seeking. So this is kind of for forgiveness process or for everybody? Then. Most definitely. Okay, Absolutely. wow. Okay, all right, so that's only one thing. One other thing is the, uh, <coughs> the uh, staff of the uh, cafe is going to cater this. Right. It is. So, okay. I mean, if you want to taste the best food in town, you better call and get a ticket <laughs> because uh, tickets are going fast. Or right. So how much are tickets? How do we get those? They, yeah. Okay. The tickets are a donation of $65. Okay. And, or you can get a table of the eight for 500 mm -hmm. Okay. So you got got tables and everything. How do we, how do we make arrangements to do this? Uh, you can call the office at 424-9019, or you can actually call my phone. It's 616 Seven six one three, and that's area code seven three one. And Marcy, for people who don't know, tell us about the the Women of Hope Recovery Center. Well, you know, I started Women of Hope because I seen there was such a need for a faith based treatment center for women, and it actually started with my own daughter that had lost three children, um, lost custody because of addiction. You know, and these girls, everyone that walks in, I feel that same thing I felt with my daughter. I know how much they love their children, and I can. You can hear them cry about it all the time. The first thing when they get sober, they start wanting their children. So I knew there had to be a place where these women could go and be safe and and they can actually find Jesus Christ because that's really, that's all, that's what it's about, you know. And they'll, each one will tell you if you ask them. They'll say that the difference in women of hope in some is their relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. Well, it's a compelling story and uh, all these women are, this is a special edition of this show every year when they, when they come here. So the gala is coming up, the 10th annual gala. It's going to be at Northside United Methodist Church in Hope Hall. And you get tickets at 424-9019 or 616-7613. It's Tuesday, November the 12th. Well, yeah. It's good to see you both. It is good to have you ladies. That story as well. That's right. Speaking yeah. of the women of hope, let's go to the main stage. And these are part of the women of hope. So many people calling, how could he ever know that just the brush of him would stop the flow? If he knew would he rebuke me or shame me to the crowd, well I'm desperate because it's never or it's now. If I could just touch the hymn some 
Here at the Emergency Operations Center, we rely on E-plus broadband fiber network to better serve Madison County. With high-speed internet, we track storms and natural disasters in real time. Also, fiber internet gives us the speed to host training classes preparing responders from all over the county and state. The phone system allows us flexibility to stay in contact and make conference calls with both in and out of the office with local, state, and federal agencies. Connectivity is an important part of emergency management. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. With E-plus broadband and Watch TV Everywhere, you can now take your TV on the go. Just visit WatchTVEverywhere.com to sign up. Then you're all set to catch your favorite shows, movies, and sports, wherever and whenever you want on any internet-connected device. Choose from our growing selection of networks from your cable package at no extra charge. Visit WatchTVEverywhere.com to learn more. It's easy to sign up for E-plus broadband's TV Everywhere. Welcome back to Six in the City. We'll have more from the Women of Hope before we get away. Trish Jarrett is with us, and she's program director for ASBEL's Pregnant Postpartum Program. ASBEL Recovery Center in West Tennessee Healthcare started a program for pregnant women called A Mother's Love, and it's at the, uh, what, what one time was a Humboldt Hospital. Opioid addiction is a tough thing out there. When babies are born addicted, it is a horrendous situation for the child. It means neonatal time and everything else, and then lifetimes of effects. So this is an aggressive program to get women that are pregnant drug-free before the baby is born. And then you pick them up when then, Trish? Uh, the Pregnant Postpartum Women's Program, I will typically get a client when they've graduated from, say, a mother's love or even from ASPL's 28-day program. Oh, okay. And, but, you know, I start working with them when they're in those programs so I can establish a relationship All right, with so them. the idea of this is to do what then? It's to bridge a gap that often um, is a very... A trying time when you're leaving that comforting place of a <clears throat> residential rehab right. and then kind of getting some freedom and going out into the world. So I provide those case management services for the client so they don't feel alone and they have some accountability. Mm -hmm. So you work with them then in a residential setting or then or wherever they are? Well, when they transfer from a mother's love, typically they'll go out and they'll be on their own in an apartment setting. Right. So, okay. But if they transfer from the 28-day program at Aspel's Jackson campus, then they will typically still be in residential Somewhere and they'll go point. into IOP. Okay. So I do deal with them when they're in re residential as well. Okay. Is right. this an automatic program or do, are they referred to you? or how, how it, is, They how are referred okay. through an internal referral um, system. So it's how long has this been underway, this relatively new thing? Then? It is. It's actually a pilot program through the state of Tennessee. I believe the grant was um, unleashed last year um, in September, but I actually started with ASPL in March of uh, 2019. And so, But we're actually in the second year of the pilot program, and it's going very well. Okay. All right. Well, you know, the, the, ch the challenge, I guess, and, and you see it like with the Women of Hope or, or whatever, the, the challenge for women is you know, still in, in our society, they are the primary connection with the children, uh, or, or in many cases they are. And, and, and it just sets up, a, it sets up a challenging situation. Like I said, first part of this with opioid and, uh, addiction and everything else is to aggressively get women drug free if you can before the baby is born and then to pick this, hopefully this healthy child up. But we still got mom and all the settings and situation with which they're dealing. That is true. It's very difficult to, um, sometimes when the women in the 28-day program and then they go into IOP. And they, IOP I, is? Uh, right. Intensive outpatient, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the challenge is to get them into a home setting, a sober home setting, because all, oftentimes home is not the yeah. best, the best place. option right. for them to go back to. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes home is the last place we need to be, <laughs> you know, which is, which, is the, which is the struggle, all right? So, so what do you want people to know about this? And are there ways they can get involved and support this? Or? 
Well, what I want them to know is that we're working with women who have criminal justice or DCS problems. Okay. Obviously, they have the substance abuse um, is the first qualifier, and they're in the surrounding counties. Madison and the surrounding counties okay. is the clientele that I work with. Okay. And I go into the jail. I meet them where they are. I go to court with them. I go to the DCS hearings where they go, and they try to, you know, meet the um, – requirements of their parenting plan to get their children back you know so I sit beside these girls women <laughs> I'm a little older but I sit beside them in some very difficult times and it just it's so it warms my heart to be able to be a part of that recovery process to know that on the other side of it that they will be healthy and when and if they do get their children back in those cases you know they're going to be a good mom for mm -hmm. that child and then when um, they go into a mother's love, I actually do go up to a mother's love once a week and I teach a nurturing parenting class. Okay. So those ladies have the healthy babies and they're getting to live with the healthy babies at a mother's <laughs> love. So there's really two dynamics mm -hmm. of clientele that I get to interact with and it's very rewarding. I'm well, sure. It, we've had people that, that come in here that have been referred by drug court and most of them say, I didn't want to go, yeah. I didn't want to be there, judge made me go. I got into treatment to stay out of jail. And then so many times it has turned their life, and so it's a good thing to see. It's a great thing, yeah. and, and a lot of times those testimonies end up being, you know, the drug court was the best yeah. thing that ever happened yeah. to right. me. We appreciate our, the judges we have in our, our county and in, in this judicial district that are participating in this. Mm -hmm. Teresa, it's good to see you. It is good to have appreciate you, Appreciate the work that's Thank you and so and much. Continued best. We're going to be back with more as we continue. Six in the city. Hi, I'm Kedrick Perkins, PGA General Manager at Jackson Country Club. Jackson Country Club's amenities are true Southern hospitality. Championship golf course, fine dining, six tennis courts, junior Olympic pool and fitness. We pride ourselves in giving our members the best. Choosing JEA was a logical choice so that we could tie in our phone, internet, and cable solutions so that we can advance our next segment of technology. In communities across Tennessee, we feel the effects of opioid addiction. We all know someone touched by addiction. People we see every day. A neighbor, a friend, a family member. Please know there is help and hope. Together we can rise above and make recovery a reality. Neighbors working together. Tennessee, together. If you or someone you love needs help for addiction, help is available. Visit TNTogether.com for more information. For the most reliable drinking water supply at the highest quality, reach for the tap. Our tap water is safe and continues to exceed all government requirements. For more information about our drinking water, visit www.jacksenergy.com slash J-E-A-C-C-R. Move over. It's the law. When approaching work vehicles or crews, move over to create a safety zone. It protects utility workers, law enforcement, firefighters, and emergency personnel. It's not an option. Slow down. It could save a life. Stay safe. Move over. We've been through an entire show with nothing about a 5K, so I, I, have, a feeling, now. I, have, I have a feeling that's about to end. <laughs> it it's is It's been such about a to nice, end. pleasant show, serious themes and everything else, but no, no running. Yes, there is running. Okay. It's coming up. It's the Glow Run. It's the Leadership Impact Run. Impact glow, I can't even speak. You <laughs> got me all started The Glow up. Run 5K. It, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's coming up at, Thursday at Liberty night. Garden. Yeah, it's Thursday night, November out? the 7th. November the 7th. That's okay. right. It starts at 630. Okay. You can come out. It's a flat course. You can do it. You, I know you can do it because you did it I one did it time one time, before. several years so ago. You right. can't say, yeah. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and I didn't come in last, either. No, you didn't. So, see, you can, you can make it happen. Some people try to come in first. I just tried to avoid being last. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the entire race looking over my shoulder to make sure somebody was still behind me. That's right. Yeah, okay. Anyway, It'll so, be a great okay. time. So. We got a musical performance. We have a lot of things going on during this time of year. Requiem for the Living is the Jackson Choral Society concert that's coming up this Saturday night, the 2nd. 
and that will be at the West Jackson Baptist Church because they are adding the 70 voices of the Choral Society plus the voices from Madison Academics Course and Northside High School's oh, Course. Wow. And they're getting lot, ready for West State, so everybody's voices. primed ready. There's a 35-minute piece that is a Latin piece. That, and there's a 30-piece orchestra to go with this. Then they're going to take an intermission, and then the choirs from the high schools will come back and do a couple of numbers as they get ready for, for, for all West. And then there'll be five additional numbers of cross-sectional music from the uh, Choral Society. So it's a splendid night. Do we need tickets? Tickets, $15. Get them at the door. You can get them at the door. $15 for adults and $5 for students. Like I said, it'll be 140 voices or that's, so, that's 30 piece orchestra. That should sound amazing. And it, it'll be an amazing night. And it's it at be. West Jackson, usually they're at Northside, but, but because of the size of the choir this time, they're at West Jackson Baptist Church, and that's coming up Saturday night, November the 2nd. All right. We are delighted to have these ladies with us. It has been the Women of Hope. Always a pleasure to have a Always a pleasure. Hope. They will be performing at the gala on the 12th. Right. And be we're sure down now. We've had Women of Hope. We have a woman of hope <laughs> to close this show. <laughs> dark and fleshed out the wonder of light and as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath The stars are made to worship so I can see your heart and everything you've made. Every burning star is signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises so God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your As you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, involving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature so alive, I can see your heart. Every pain. 